All right, so you're in the market, you're looking to buy some real estate, you know it's a crazy market right now, right? Today we're gonna go over the top five mistakes that I see buyers making right now in 2022. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. It is your realtor, Nick Isgro with eXp Realty here in Central Maine. Now, as I said at the beginning, today we're gonna to cover five mistakes that I see very common with buyers right now in this crazy seller's market. Now, before we get into that, I do wanna welcome you here to the channel. If you've never been here before, we do cover all things real estate here in the state of Maine, but particularly in the Central Maine market. If that is of interest to you and adds value to your process in the buying or selling of homes, or if you just like real estate, go ahead and give this video a like. Hit the subscribe button, knock that little alarm bell, you'll be notified every time I put out new content. All right guys, we're gonna jump right into these five mistakes that I see buyers making right now in the current real estate market in 2022. You're gonna to wanna to stick around to number five because this is probably the most common thing that I see as far as when it comes to not getting the deals that you're looking for. Without any further ado, we're gonna jump right into number one. And the number one uh, mistake that I see people making in this market right now when looking to purchase real estate is just not being prepared for this crazy market. Um, as you may or may not know, it is like the wild west out there. It is not a normal market. It's not even like a year ago when we were just telling you how hot it was and what a seller's market it is. It is a seller's market, but right now things are going a little bit wacky and you just have to understand what's going on. And I wanna stress, this is probably more particularly aimed at uh, not just first time home buyers, but those who are in the market for homes in kind of that median price range here in central Maine, somewhere between 200,000 and 350 on the price range, particularly in here, this is the most competitive market that we have right now. Now when I say not prepared, what do I mean? I mean, asking for things like closing costs to be paid for by the seller. I'm gonna tell you guys right now, and you just have to hear this, if you are in a competitive offer scenario, you're gonna be going up likely against, you know, maybe five to 10 other offers sometimes on property, asking for the seller to pay the closing costs is almost a non-starter unless you're just offering so much above the asking price that they're gonna get that money back. But the thing you have to understand too is that as we saw last month on average here in the central main market, homes are selling for over asking price. They're selling for about 2% over asking price. Anecdotally, I'm gonna tell you that experience on the market, definitely as you start getting down into the high 100s and the low 200s uh, on the price range, say around 200,000 just as a, as a target price here, these are going for you know, 20, $30,000 over asking price. In Waterville, we just recently had one on First Rangeway, a little over 1,900 square feet. It was uh, basically half ba finished basement, that square footage. And that sold uh, for over like $40,000 over asking price. Ended up closing at $285,000. I believe it was listed around 245. Uh, but this is just the market that we're in right now, especially in those competitive categories. You know, other things you wanna think about, if you're qualified for a conventional loan, even if it's only a 3% down, uh, don't use the FHA product or the USDA product. If you're qualified for a USDA loan and an FHA loan, the FHA loan might be a little bit more competitive. If you're using a VA loan, uh, but you actually have enough money for a down payment, make it clear that you have the money for the down payment and don't just put in the 100% financing offer. These are just some words of advice coming from this uh, agent who's been on the market for a little bit now and telling you what's going on out there. So number one mistake for buyers right now, just not really having a sense or understanding of this market or working with an agent that's not gonna be honest with you upfront about how competitive you need to be right now when you're making some of these offers. And by the way, this isn't to discourage anybody. There's still a lot of first time home buyers jumping into market. There are going to be deals to be found, I think particularly as we press in through July and August, if we look at last year, if trends continue based off last year, things will start to slow down a little bit. Some of the buyers will you know, go on vacation, they'll start getting ready for school towards the end of summer. Things will lighten up. You have to kind of look for those seasonal flows but it's probably still gonna remain competitive. So you wanna be prepared for the market and make sure before you put in an offer on whatever house that there's been some analysis gone in so that you have the competitive edge going into that offer. All right guys, the second mistake that I see buyers making right now in the market is not working with the good lender. And I say this all the time, 
please, 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 please work with a local lender that you know. If you can work with a local community bank, we have lots of great community banks and credit unions here in the central Maine market. There's also great mortgage lenders out there uh, here in the state of Maine that actually have physical offices here in our communities here in the state of Maine. So I'm not saying that you need to go with a bank versus a mortgage broker or anything like that, but go with somebody local, somebody that you can trust. Talk to your agent if you are working with a real estate agent and find out who do they like to work with? Who do they recommend? Most agents uh, that are in the market right now are gonna have multiple lenders that they can refer you to. They'll give you more than one choice. If you guys aren't working with somebody right now and you're looking for a lender and you just want to talk to somebody about your finances, uh, drop Drop a message to me, send me a note, send me a DM, whatever it is. However you're most comfortable uh, reaching out to me through my contact information that's in all of my posts here, um, reach out. I can refer you to some really great preferred lenders that I work with, but why does that make a difference? Well, you really want their advice, guidance, and expertise when it comes to the financial side of the transaction. You, your real estate agent does not have insight into your personal finances, does not have insight into what's going on with your credit bureaus and your debts and your debt to income ratios and things like that. So working with a good solid lender right from the get go, really even before you start looking at houses is one of the most important things you can do. It's definitely one of the things I will recommend above almost anything else to start the process is work with that local lender get somebody good who you can talk to get on the phone and who understands your local market your area and your particular individual needs all right buyer mistake number three that I'm seeing in the market right now is buyers who are just reaching right out to the selling agent thinking that they're going to get a better deal because they're working directly with the selling agent well that's not really probably going to be the case because a couple of things. One, that agent already has a contract with the seller. So they're looking out for that seller's best interest. Now, as we've gone through in a video here before, we talk about the difference of client versus customer in different types of agency relationships. You could end up certainly um, in a disclosed dual agency relationship but that's not gonna give you a competitive advantage. I'm not saying that's good or bad, that works for some transactions. I myself work as a disclosed dual agent from time uh, to time. It's something I try to avoid, but if it works for both parties and we make sure it works for both parties by getting them to agree that they want the same agent working both sides of the deal, that's gonna be fine. But if you just reach out to the selling agent thinking that's gonna give you a better deal, they're never going to give you the advantage because they have a fiduciary obligation to the seller already to try to get the best deal for the seller, regardless of who they're working with, regardless of whether they're working with you as a buyer or if they get a more competitive offer from somebody else. So not saying not to do it, I'm just saying don't do it with the intention of thinking you're gonna get a competitive advantage by working directly with that agent. Mistake number four that buyers can make in this market right now is writing multiple offers and putting them out at the same time. This is not a scenario you wanna get yourself in and listen, I get it guys, it's super competitive. Some of you are very frustrated. It's very hard to get an offer accepted depending on the price point that you're at. And that's probably gonna be more towards that lower end price point, but you might have a higher price point that's just gonna be a really popular property, especially if it's waterfront, lakefront, things like that. But if you're, let's say you're right, four offers. Well, what happens if all four of them get accepted? Now you're gonna either have to put four earnest deposits down, spend thousands of dollars doing that because you have these legally binding contracts, or you're gonna have to break contracts that you've entered. And that's not gonna be a good scenario for you. It's certainly not gonna build a great reputation for the agent you're working with. I would just recommend that find the property that you really like, don't act out of desperation, and write one really strong offer, the strongest offer you can for the properties you like, put them in one at a time. All right, so this is the big one, guys. Buyer mistake number five that I see going on in the market right now, and this goes for all price categories. It's a mistake, not everyone's doing it, but it is just something you have to be aware of. And this is being too passive 
when it comes to making a competitive offer. Look, like I said at the beginning, it is like the Wild West. Pricing is all over the map. We're trying to comp properties. Appraisers are trying to comp properties. Prices are all over the place, depending on location uh, and whatnot. But you still have to make the best offer that you can. So if you're in a price range where homes are going and we can look at the recent sales or pendings and know that on average, they're gonna go for $20,000 over the asking price, asking for less than the asking price is just not smart out of the gate because you're not gonna get the offer. Asking, like I said, asking for the closing costs, asking for more work to be done in the house when you know there's multiple offers on it, these are just not ways that you're going to land yourself the home. It's not gonna be like this forever, guys. You know, it's definitely gonna shift at some point. How and when, we don't know. We know interest rates are going up, but we also know that we have like a five and a half million shortage of housing units uh, in the market to satisfy current buyer demand. And we still do have new buyers that are coming to the market. So until that supply side of the market increases, it's just gonna be a little bit crazy out there. But if you are in the market and you wanna buy, great. It still could be a good time. And I still see people getting good deals. I know the houses that they're getting are going to continue to appreciate over the next couple of years. But at the same time, if you want the house, don't be too passive when you're writing the offer. You're gonna to have to be very aggressive. But the caveat here, the little disclaimer I wanna put here is ask your agent to do a little bit of analysis on the specific house. Because if you're in a more rural market, if you're in a place you know that's that's you know miles and miles out of town and it's not near anything those markets are going to be a little bit slower so what you want to do is find out for the specific property that you're looking at what is the average days on market for that price point and for that area when you combine those those pieces of data the price point in the specific market area you're going to get a good sense of where you are in the cycle and then you're going to know about how competitive your offer needs to be all right there it is guys there's five mistakes that i see buyers making in the market right now if you have made some of these mistakes don't feel bad it's our job as agents to give you the guidance and the information you need to guide you through this crazy market and it's important to remember that a market like this is not going to last forever it's also important to know that the right house will come up for you if you are patient and give yourself a reasonable timeline to find it. But if you are in the market right now and you're looking at homes and you've been putting in some of these offers, what's your experience been? Go ahead and drop a comment below. I'd love to hear from you guys. Don't forget guys, my name is Nick Isgro. I'm with eXp Realty here in Central Maine. If you have any questions at all about real estate in general, about the market, or you just wanna jam out on ideas about what you're doing in the market right now, check out my contact information. It's on every post that I put up and you can reach out to me. I'd be happy to connect with you and give you any referrals that you might need or just talk to you about the situation that you're in. As always guys, I thank you so much for sticking around to the end of this video. I appreciate each and every one of you and until next week, See you next time.